Updating information in a database table is a two-step process. Step one is to identify the particular item to be updated, query the data from the database, and deliver to a view so that it can be edited. Step two is to deliver the data back to a controller for the data update to be made back into the database. This video covers step one. A follow-up video will cover step two. We are using an MVC approach and begin in the view where a list of items has been displayed. Next to each is a link to modify, being in update, or delete the item. Each of these links passes two name value pairs to the controller. The first pair triggers the appropriate case statement to begin the update query process, while the second pair indicates the particular record in the database to be queried for the update to proceed. An appropriate control structure, in our case case statement, must be present in the controller to begin our update process. It is within the case statement that the second pair's value is captured and stored in a local variable. You'll notice that we use links, therefore the controller is looking in the get object for the name value pair. We do some filtering of the incoming data to limit to only an integer, since that is the expected data type. The value is then sent into a function to query the data from the database. The function is stored in the vehicle's model. The returned array of data is then stored into a local variable. We then test the array variable. If empty, an error message is generated. In either case, a view is returned to the browser to display either the error or the data. In the vehicle's model is where the function to query the data is stored. This function gets the information based on the integer value sent to it. The queried data, if any, is returned as an associative array to the controller. The view discussed earlier, to display the data, is an adaptation of the view used to insert a new vehicle to the database. It was copied and saved as vehicleUpdate.php, then edited. Among the edits were to show the vehicle make and model in the title element and repeat the same in the H1 heading of the file. The hidden input element to trigger the controller case statement was changed to represent that an update process is starting. Another hidden input was added to include and pass the inventory ID of the vehicle to the controller. Finally, the submit button value was altered to represent an update process. Each input contains a PHP code block to display the value from the item array of data and to be sticky in case an error is detected during step two of the update process. The form has a text area, and so the PHP code block is placed between the opening and closing tags and contains no other spaces. This is a very important concept to remember. The code for building the classification list has also been altered to test if the classification that was submitted matches an existing classification, and if so, that classification is selected. To use this administrative view, the client must be logged in and also be an administrator with a client level greater than 1. To see this in action, log into the site and navigate to the vehicle management view via the vehicle's controller. Select a classification of vehicle. The list of vehicles should appear. Click the Modify link of one of the vehicles. If everything worked, the information should appear in the form, in the main content heading, and in the title. View the page source code and check the hidden inputs that they have the correct name value pairs and that the ID for the item appears. If all of this is present, then we are ready to move forward to step two, which is to submit and store the updated data to the database.